think I have more hope in men than the average woman, but I think it's because of the men that I associate with. So I wanna give you an example. I know I give examples about like what my husband does on here to, you know, deconstruct patriarchy and, you know, push back against toxic masculinity and stuff. Uh, he's in two men's groups where they talk about vulnerability and support each other and cry and try to be better men, better husbands, better partners, better uh, father. Because even though they learn so much from women in terms of, you know, what patriarchy is. They're gonna learn a lot more of that from women than they are from men. The problem is a lot of men won't listen to women. But it's also because my husband knows that part of the deal for being with me, um, especially because I wrote that Harper's Bazaar article about men not having friends and women bearing the burden. He knows that I expect him to have his own community and support group that's not just me, right? So he has two of those, two men's groups. They've been going strong for, one of them for like th three and a half years, the other one for two and a half years. And these men love each other and they support each other and they push each other to grow and learn and hold each other accountable and all that stuff, right? But I also wanna share, I forget to sometimes share examples from my guy friends because it's not just my husband. It's the, the men in my life are actively working on this stuff. I don't, I'm not here, I'm, I, I have no patience. <laughs> I have no patience for men who don't care about patriarchy. I just don't. And, and and all of these systems, because they're all tied together, right? You can't have patriarchy without white supremacy and capitalism and you can't have, a, you know, okay? You have like, you can't just focus on one. It's all of it, right? The men who are just like, yeah, yeah, I'm a leftist, blah, blah, but I don't care about women. I'll just exploit them. No, you don't get, you, you're, you, you're not in my life. So I was at my friend's house the other day and he had put up, he had bought his own Christmas tree. You know, he has his own apartment. He lives alone. He painted the apartment, decorated it really nicely as plants. You know, he actually invited me over to cook. He cooked me soup and fed me, you know? Uh, I did like literally nothing. I just showed up and ate and chatted and left. And he had a Christmas tree and he would bought some lights and decorations because he realized that, you know, uh, it would make him feel good about himself, you know? Because a lot of us, myself included. You know, when I was single, I was like, oh wait, I guess if I want Christmas magic, I gotta make it myself. Mom's not gonna do this, right? We know Christmas magic is almost always mom's. And so I learned this lesson myself. I put up my own, uh, started putting up a tree for myself, just for myself to enjoy, right? And that was a big moment because I was like, you know what? I deserve this. I want this. It's just for me. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel proud of myself. It makes me feel, feel so proud of my home and this life I've created. And so my friend, he did that too. And it was this beautiful tree. I mean, it's France, so the, the trees here are so tiny. It's really funny. And they also don't come with water. I have to show you guys. See that? They're in these like logs. They're in these logs. Look at that. You can't water them. They die. He had gone to, you know, like a home decorating store and got some beautiful like balls, you know, like that were very specific to his taste. He had lights and he's not even gonna be here for like Christmas. He's like flying home. But just, just for a couple weeks in his apartment to ha create that own Christmas magic for himself. And then on the table that we ate lunch, he had a, uh, a fresh bouquet of, uh, of tulips because that was his mother's favorite flower and she died. Um, a couple years ago and that's and they remind him of his mom and he wants love for her in his home you know what I mean like when I think about so many men that I grew up with who are my age I cannot imagine any of those men doing any of that and it's not necessarily an age thing but a lot of it is a generational thing because yes we do have like the Andrew Tates and the Jordan Petersons and all those men who are radicalizing men back into toxic masculinity or this new form that Jordan Peterson's all about where it's like blaming women for men not being emotionally intelligent. I've already made videos about that. Literally just blaming us for how violent men make emotions for each other. They blame that on us. It's always our fault, right? They won't, men, women won't let us cry. Yeah, we will. You just, you only cry to manipulate us. When you cry from an authentic place that's really about your feelings, I am here for it. But I will not cry for, because of your self-pity and because you don't work on your stuff and you won't pay a therapist and you will not work on your stuff. You literally use tears to manipulate me and blah, blah, blah. But my friends, the men in my life, my husband, my guy friends, they are like on a different planet. 
than most of the men that I, that I am, am used to. And it's because they are working on themselves. They're questioning themselves. They're realizing that this system sucks for everybody. And even though they benefit from it, they're also imprisoned by it and they're miserable and they can't be their authentic selves. If they keep along with these gender norms and this binary crap, and the reason why I want to bring this up is because I, having been a tomboy and, you know, a lot of this is trauma response too, but having worked in the male dominated industries with so many men, I ended up somehow becoming a toxically masculine feminist or whatever. I just, you know, I became a cool girl. I wanted to fit in with the guys. I wanted to do the stuff that men were allowed to do without question, like being a raft guide, being a wilderness instructor, a leader, like saving, you know, lives in the wilderness if necessary like i always knew i was I, I wanted to be a leader and because of the environment i was in i ended up becoming so out of touch with my own nurturing caring self call it feminine self whatever you want to call it and the first the first time i started unpacking this stuff is when i did the artist way I talked about this book before and how I actually did a workshop in New Mexico when I was living in a trailer and crapping in a bucket. I did a workshop. <laughs> I spent all my money to go down to Santa Fe and do a workshop with Julia Cameron. And this changed my life because it made me question all these things that my ego had latched onto. And for me, just like a lot of men, it was this like toxically masculine, like, I don't need flowers. I hate flowers. But I was talking about with my friend and I was like, oh, that's so cool. You bought flowers for yourself. And it wasn't just because of his mother. He said it was also like a fork you to a culture that says that he can't enjoy flowers because he's a man. He thinks flowers are beautiful and he's going to buy them for himself because they make him feel good. And they, you know what I mean? And I had to do that same thing when I was living in that trailer. Well, I've actually lived in several, but this was the trailer that I really started to get in touch with like a softer side of myself. Started cooking myself food, warm food instead of just eating what's easy. I mean, y'all, back then, I was so bad at self-care and nurturing and pouring into myself that I was like, I would eat just like cliff bars for meals because I just couldn't be bothered for cooking. And actually, I still can't be bothered. My husband is the one who cooks. He's the cook. He's the one who feeds me and nurtures me because he knows that on my own, I'll just eat like baguettes with like avocado or some crap because I'm just, <laughs> it's also ADHD. I just can't, I can't, I can't think about food. It, it stresses me out. But I remember um, the first time I bought myself flowers, I think I was like 34 maybe, you know, living in this trailer, crapping in a bucket because I had no running water, a bucket outside. And I, I bought myself flowers and because the artist way and my friend, he's read that book several times and him and I talk about it all the time and how it really has helped us tap into our real true selves. It's not just about being an artist. It's about really like falling in love with yourself and being driven more by your intuition rather than fear and ego and all those things. It's, I mean, it's some of it's kind of corny and whatever, but it really was a good start. So if, that's, if anyone who just doesn't know where to start, that's a, that's a great place to start. And the first time it was like, maybe go buy yourself flowers. I don't know. Like I went and bought myself, I bought sunflowers because they were, you know, in New Mexico, they're the cheapest. But every time I came home and I saw those flowers, I was like, well, look at you. Somebody loves you today and it's me, right? Because I had never been bought flowers. I've been bought flowers twice in my entire life. Once was from a guy who I had met. It was just like, whatever. It, it, it's not even worth going to the store. The only other time I've been bought flowers was when my ex in high school, the one that I just did a video on the guy who was in prison now, <laughs> uh, he found out that I found out he was cheating on me with someone at the farm, which if you know <laughs> It's like a hippie commune in Tennessee. He'd gone to the farm and cheated on me. And I was having unprotected I mean, God. Uh, but he left two dozen red roses on my front porch when he found out that I found him. So I associated flowers with like men trying to manipulate me. And I associate flowers with like men giving them to me, right? The same way my friend associated flowers is like women. And you know, like that's how we're all conditioned. And so for us, both of us, him as a man and me as like a toxically masculine person back then who was like, I don't need flowers, fork flowers, fl fork women who wear pink and you know, want children and like flowers and makeup. I was like so anti woman because I was so afraid of that, any side of me that was feminine. And so the first step for me was buying myself flowers. I did it every week and it was like five bucks, you know? But it brought me so much joy. My point is, is that all of us have a lot of work to do to deconstruct this stuff we've been taught. And I know a lot of men doing it. 
Unfortunately, most of them are younger.